Hello everyone, my name is Amit Jyoti. I am an assistant professor at the OP Jindal Global University. In this module, we will continue from our discussion in the previous module about the concept of Jaskogens. After going through the previous module, a few questions that come to mind are possibly, is there any particular list of human rights that is claimed to be part of Jaskogens? To what extent the human rights which are agreed to be just cogens are protected by the international and domestic courts? These are the questions that we are going to discuss and answer in this particular module. Before answering these questions, it is important to note the exact content and scope of just cogens has always been a debatable issue. Having said that, there is a consensus among international legal scholars that some human rights have in fact acquired the status of just cogens. Now this debate over which human right norm has acquired the status of just cogens is partially due to the disagreement among scholars as to the justification of just cogens. This latter debate has focused on three theories, which are the natural law theory, public order and the customary international law. To be frank, none of these theory truly lives up to the arguments which are advanced by each of these scholars. Natural law theories are centered on the identification of certain fixed natural law, whereas the number and nature of just cogens norms is assumed to develop in accordance with the changing nature of the international community. According to the public order theories, the concept of just cogens norms are essential to the integrity of international law as a legal system. This theory argues that international law recognizes certain imperative norms as hierarchically superior to ordinary laws in order to promote the interest of the international community as a whole. Having said that, this theory does not illuminate the normative basis of preemptory norms, nor does it clarify which particular international norms should be deemed preemptory. A leading positivist theory of just cogens conceives of preemptory norms as customary laws. This view goes right at the heart of just cogens and continues to view it through the positivist prism of state consent. However, given that the state rarely expresses an affirmative intent to transform ordinary customary norms into preemptory law, this argument again is questionable. To summarize this, none of the foregoing theories which we just discussed address the enduring paradox at the core of human rights discourse and therefore just cogens remains a concept in search of a viable theory. In fact, the International Court of Justice has declined to clarify just cogens legal status or to specify any criteria for identifying preemptory norms. In this regard, therefore, it is best to rely on state practice and judicial decisions to figure which norms have attained the level of just cogens. Having said that, commonly cited examples of norms that have attained the threshold of just cogens include prohibition on genocide, slavery, forced disappearances, torture or other cruel, inhuman or degrading treatment or punishment. Moreover, scholars suggest 
that a reliable starting point in identifying those international legal prescriptions that have achieved the status is the list of rights that international human rights treaties render as non-derogable. Accordingly, now let us look at international case law that has contributed to the development of material content of the concept of just cogens. We would first look at the contributions that have been made by the Inter-American Court of Human Rights. The Inter-American Court of Human Rights, which is also referred to as IACTHR, is an autonomous judicial institution that has been set up by the organization of the American states. This particular court serves to uphold and promote the basic rights and freedoms in the Americas. OAS established this court to enforce and interpret the provisions of the American Convention on Human Rights. Let us now examine how the Inter-American Court of Human Rights has contributed towards the concept of just cogens. In a case called the Brother Gomes Pakwari versus Peru, the Inter-American Court of Human Rights was dealing with a suit that was bought by representatives of two brothers who were detained by the Peruvian National Police. They were placed in the trunk of a police patrol car and then allegedly executed by firing firearms shot at their head, thorax and other parts of the body. Prior to being executed, these alleged offenders of terrorist acts were in fact thrown to the ground, kicked and a policeman stepped on their backs. While dealing with this matter of alleged torture by police officers, the Inter-American Court of Human Rights noted, it said that torture is strictly prohibited by the international law of human rights. The prohibition of torture is absolute and non-derogable, even in the most difficult circumstances such as war, threat of war, fight against terrorism and any other delects, states of sage or of emergency, commotion or internal conflict or suspension of constitutional guarantees, internal political instability or other emergencies or public calamities. An international juridical system of absolute prohibition of all forms of torture both physical and psychological has been established and it is today part of the sphere of international just cogens. Thereafter, in another case of Caesar versus Trinidad and Tobago, the Inter-American Court of Human Rights took a step further and categorically held that in addition to the prohibition of torture, even the prohibition of cruel, inhuman and degrading treatment has entered into the domain of just cogens. The court also noted that such a prohibition will have to be complied with independent of any codification or declaration since all these practices constitute a violation of preemptory norms of international law. In the advisory opinion of the juridical condition and rights of undocumented migrants, the government of Mexico being concerned with the incompatibility with the OAS human rights system and of the interpretations, practices and enactment of laws by some states in the region had called upon the Inter-American Court of Human Rights requesting an advisory opinion on the deprivation of the enjoyment and exercise of certain labor rights of migrant workers and its compatibility with the obligation of the American states to ensure the principles of legal equality, non-discrimination 
and the equal and effective protection of the law that is embodied in the international instruments for the protection of human rights. Now, while delivering this opinion, the Inter-American Court of Human Rights held that the court considers that the principle of equality before law, equal protection before law and non-discrimination belongs to just cogents. The reason being the whole legal structure of national and international public order rests on it and it is a fundamental principle that permeates all laws. Nowadays, no legal act that is in conflict with this fundamental principle is acceptable and discriminatory. Treatment of any person owing to gender, race, color, language, religion or belief, whether political or other opinion, national, ethnic or social origin, nationality, age, economic situation, property, civil status, birth or any other status is unacceptable. This principle of equality and non-discrimination forms part of general international law. At the existing stage of the development of international law, the fundamental principle of equality and non-discrimination has entered the realm of just cogents. In La Kentuta versus Peru, an application was filed for alleged violation of human rights of a professor, a few of his students and their next kin on the grounds of the alleged kidnapping of the victims from a university that was located in Lima. It was alleged that this kidnapping operation was carried out by the Peruvian army. After which, some of these victims had in fact disappeared or had been summarily executed. Giving its opinion in this matter, the Inter-American Court of Human Rights stated that the duty to investigate and eventually conduct trials and impose sanctions and becomes particularly compelling and important in view of the seriousness of the crimes committed and the nature of the rights wrong. All the more since the prohibition against the forced disappearance of people and the corresponding duty to investigate and punish these responsible has become just cogents. The acts involved in the instant case have violated preemptory norms of international law, which is just cogents, under Article 1, Clause 1 of the American Convention, the states have the duty to investigate human rights violations and to prosecute and punish those responsible. In view of the nature and seriousness of the events, all the more since the context of this case is one of systematic violation of human rights, the need to eradicate impunity reveals itself to the international community as a duty of cooperation among states for such purpose. Access to justice constitutes a preemptory norm of international law and as such it gives rise to the state's ergo omnis obligation to adopt all such measures as are necessary to prevent such violations from going unpunished. Whether exercising their judicial power to apply their domestic law and international law to judge and eventually punish all those who are responsible for such events or collaborating with other states aiming in that specific direction. As has been clear from our discussion, just cogens, uh, the status of just cogens has been accorded to the prohibition of torture, to the prohibition of cruel, inhuman or degrading treatment, the principle of equality before law, equal protection before the law and non-discrimination, the prohibition to commit crimes against humanity 
access to justice, prohibition of the forced disappearance of persons and lastly the corresponding obligation to investigate and punish all those who are responsible. Now, let us look at the contributions of ICTY. ICTY is an abbreviation that stands for International Criminal Tribunal for the Former Yugoslavia. It is a United Nations Court of Law which was formulated to deal with war crimes that took place during the conflicts in the Balkans 1990s. Since its establishment in 1993, it has irreversibly changed the landscape of international humanitarian law and provided victims an opportunity to voice the horrors they witnessed and experienced. In its precedent-setting decisions on genocide, war crimes and crimes against humanity, the tribunal has shown that an individual's senior position can no longer protect them from prosecution. Now, let us look at some of the cases that have been decided by ICTY. In Prosecutor versus Anto F, decided on December 10, 1998, the defendant was accused was a citizen of Bosnia and Herzegovina, who was responsible of serious violations of international humanitarian law committed in the former territory of Yugoslavia since 1991. While holding the accused guilty of violations of customs of war, the ICTY in this case held that it should be noted that the prohibition of torture that is laid down in human rights treaties enshrines an absolute right which can never be derogated from not even in times of emergency. Prohibition on torture is a preemptory norm or just cogens. This prohibition is so extensive that states are even barred by international law from expelling, returning or extraditing a person to another state where there are substantial grounds for believing that the person would be in danger of being subjected to torture. Thereafter, in Prosecutor versus Goran Jelisic, decided on December 14, 1999, the court referred to the provisions relating to the prohibition of genocide as those falling under customary international law. Even though the court itself did not acknowledge such nature, it did refer to such recognition by the International Court of Justice. Furthermore, in another case of prosecutor versus Kuprex and others decided on January 14, 2000, the court held that most norms of international humanitarian law, in particular those prohibiting war crimes, crimes against humanity and genocide are also preemptory norms of international law or just cogens, that is of a non-derogable and an overriding character. Now let us move on to discuss the contributions of International Court of Justice towards the concept of just cogens. The rigidity introduced by the inderogable character of just cogens has caused a great deal of reluctance on the part of International Court of Justice to draw mechanical conclusions from the hierarch hierarchical superiority of preemptory norms over any other rule of international law. Therefore, the ICJ had kept quiet on the very existence of such a normative category of law for a very long time and has come off lately. In its 1996 advisory opinion, on the legality of use or threat of use of nuclear weapons, the court created a category of new norms which it called intransgressible principles of humanitarian law in order to avoid referring to the term jescogens. 
The fact that the ICJ was never fond of just cogens is further attested to by the court's alternative use of the notion of obligations erga omnes. While the two notions may be complementary, they remain distinct and to consider them as synonymous risks undermining the legal distinctiveness of each category for the erga omnes nature of an obligation indicates no clear superiority of that obligation over other obligations. Further, distinction between the two concepts is discussed later in this module. The ICJ also referred to certain general and well recognized principles among which are 1. Elementary considerations of humanity. Just a year later, the court gave one of its most famous advisory opinions in which it stated that the principles underlying the convention are principles which are recognized by civilized nations as binding on states, even without any conventional obligation. These lines and also the reasoning in the Barcelona traction case display that the court has from the very beginning deemed it necessary to highlight the existence of particular, particularly important norms in international law. Although it has been less than clear about their status or their operation. Given the foregoing hesitations that we see, there are a few examples where the ICJ categorically decided the just cogent nature of a particular norm. As we just saw and even in other modules that we have discussed. However, one recent example is that of questions relating to the obligation to prosecute or extradite between Belgium and Senegal where the court held, in the court's opinion, the prohibition of torture is a part of customary international law and it has become a preemptory norm. That prohibition is grounded in a widespread international practice and on the opinion juris of states. It appears in numerous international instruments of universal application in particular, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights of 1948, the Geneva Conventions for Protection of War Victims of 1949, the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights of 1966, the General Assembly Resolution No. 3452 by 30 of 9 December 1975, on the protection of all persons from being subjected to torture and other cruel, inhuman or degrading treatment or punishment. And it has been introduced into the domestic law of almost all states. Finally, acts of torture are regularly denounced within national and international fora. The relationship that exists between just cogens and erga omnis obligations is what we will now discuss. The close relationship between just cogens and the notion of erga omnis obligations is a constant source of confusion. Just cogens norms are particularly important norms that are distinguished by their non-derogability. A norm that conflicts with them as we have seen is null and void. Obligations erga omnis are obligations in the fulfillment of which every state has a legal interest. It is likely that all states have a legal interest in the observance of rules from which no derogation is permitted. In this sense, it is plausible to assume that all just cogent norms constitute erga omnis obligations. But the equation does not work the other way around. From the fact that all states have an interest in the fulfillment of an obligation, 
it does not necessarily follow that those norms are preemptory. That is to say, they do not necessarily render conflicting obligations null and void. In the commentary to the draft articles, the ILC, International Law Commission, elaborated the relationship between just cogens and obligations erna omnis as it stated that while preemptory norms of general international law focus on the scope and priority to be given to a certain number of fundamental obligations, the focus of obligations to the international community as a whole is essentially on the legal interest of all the states in compliance. That is, in terms of the present articles, in being entitled to invoke the responsibility of any state in breach. Consistently with the difference in their focus, it is appropriate to reflect the consequences of the two concepts in two distinct ways. First, serious breaches of obligations arising under preemptory norms of general international law can attract additional consequences, not only for the responsible state, but for all the states. Secondly, all states are entitled to invoke responsibility for breaches of obligations to the international community as a whole. In the Barcelona traction case, the ICJ stated, an essential distinction should be drawn between the obligations of a state towards international community as a whole and those arising vis-a-vis -vis another state in the field of diplomatic protection. By their very nature, the former are the concern of all states. In view of the importance of the rights involved, all states can be held to have a legal interest in their protection. They are obligations erga omnis. Thus, the first criterion of an obligation rising to the level of erga omnis is, in the words of ICJ, the obligations of a state towards the international community as a whole. While the ICJ goes on to give examples of such obligations in Barcelona traction, it does not define precisely what meaning it attaches to the phrase obligations of a state towards the international community as a whole. The relationship between just cogens and the obligations erga omnis was never clearly articulated by the PCIJ that existed before ICJ, nor was it clarified by ICJ, nor did the jurisprudence of either court explicitly articulate how a given norm becomes just cogens or why and when it becomes erga omnis and what consequences derive from this. Obviously, a just cogens norm rises to that level when the principle it embodies has been universally accepted through a consistent practice which is accompanied by the necessary opinio juris by most states. Thus, the principle of territorial sovereignty has risen to the level of a preemptory norm because all states have consented to the right of states to exercise exclusive territorial jurisdiction. Thank you for listening to this module.